एवरीवन वेलकम टू द न्यू टॉपिक प्लांट किंगडम सो लेट अस सी व्हाट विल बी लर्निंग इन टुडेस वीडियो सो वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट व्हाट इज अ प्लांट किंगडम जनरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ एल्गे क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एल्गे एंड इकोनॉमिक इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ एल्गे सो यू माइट बी वंडरिंग algae we have already learned in the previous videos in this video we'll be learning little more in depth about algae so let us see what is a plant kingdom so we are surrounded by several kinds of plants in the nature which are all included in the plant kingdom so plant kingdom is a very big group or a family which includes all the plants that that are found in the nature so we have around 9 million plants that we find in our earth about 80% of plants on the terrestrial that is on the ground 20% of plants in the water so including everything it is included in the plant kingdom so all the plants are part of plant kingdom so all these plants are broken down into smaller groups or they are classified based on size or how they reproduce or if water and nutrients can travel can travel through the plants based on certain characteristics different plants can be classified into different groups so that we'll be learning later so in general the plants are classified into two main categories so the plant kingdom is divided as flowering plants and non flowering plants so the non flowering plants are called as cryptogams and the flowering plants are known as phanerogams so you should remember these terms non flowering plants are called cryptogams flowering plants are called as phanerogams so based on that let us learn about algae so algae is a non flowering category which can be included in cryptogams so in the algae we'll be learning general characteristics classification and economic importance so in the previous sessions or videos you have already learned what algae is and where they are found so algae is a simple primitive cell which consists chlorophyll so algae are chlorophyll bearing simple primitive plants so algae can be simple primitive and they are chlorophyll bearing so as they have chlorophyll in them they are autotrophic in nature autotrophic means they can produce their own food and survive so we have already learned that algae are different from plants so as i had said algae are different from plants maybe because they do not have stem leaf and root like plants so that is why algae are called as thallophyta or algae belongs to a group called as thallophyta thallophyta means the algae body is called as thallus which means that the body is not differentiated into root stem and leaves so such group of uh, plants are called as thallophyta and algae belongs to thallophyta so these algae are found everywhere in the nature maybe in the moist areas moist soil or in the lakes ponds fresh water and marine in the aquatic regions the minute algae that floats on the surface of water that we see on the ponds or lakes are generally called as phytoplankton 
so the minute algae that float on the surface of water are called as phytoplankton some oh. algae live as symbionts symbionts means some algae live along with fungi so in mutual benefits how it is possible some algae and fungi live together algae produces food and gives to the fungi and in return fungi gives shelter to the algae such mutually benefits uh, algae and fungi living together are called as symbionts some algae are also found as epiphytes epiphytes means epi above phytes means plants so some algae are found to live above other plants they do not live as a parasite they just live on other plants and they can survive by themselves so such algae are called as epiphytes so the branch of study of algae is called as phycology and the people who study phycology are called as phycologists so you can see a image of algae which is found on the surface of water called as phytoplanktons this is the image of algae which is present beneath the water that is under the water this is the image of thallophyta so as i said thallophyta are group of plants which do not have the plant body differentiated into leaves stem and root so in the picture you can see the plant body is not having any stem or root kind of structure they have just leaf kind of structure that's all which is not a leaf in actual now let us see reproduction in algae reproduction in algae means how these algae reproduce and produce their younger ones so in reproduction in algae we can see three different types of reproduction the first one is vegetative propagation under vegetative propagation we have fragmentation so vegetative propagation is a asexual reproduction in which we don't need fusion or we don't need any male or female organisms to mate so what happens in vegetative propagation is the plant body itself give rise to a younger one for example we have seen cultivation of potatoes so what we do is we cut the potatoes and plant them so from the potatoes we again get new fresh potatoes that is nothing but vegetative propagation so or in we can see in some few plants we cut the branch and we just keep it in the pot the flower or the plant grows automatically such kind of reproduction is called as vegetative reproduction in algae we can see fragmentation that is the body of the algae gets fragmented or gets divided into two or more parts and that parts again grow into a new algal body so this is a vegetative reproduction that is fragmentation the next one is asexual reproduction vegetative propagation is also a sexual reproduction but we have one more asexual reproduction that is spore formation so what happens is this is a algal so you can see in the end there is a bulging structure which is called as sporangium this sporangium inside this sporangium we have several number of spores spores are a single celled uh, body we can say so these spores are present inside the sporangium so what happens is when the sporangium bursts these spores are coming out of the sporangium and then these spores can again grow into a new algae body so you might wonder this image looks like 
it has a stem it has a root all those things no the stem like structure or the root like structure do not perform the function of stem and root instead they are called as hyphae so the stem like and root like structures are called as hyphae they do not perform the function of root or stem as we see in plants so this is spore formation the spores which are dispersed grow into a new algae body next is sexual reproduction so in sexual reproduction which is a which is seen in majority of organism that is fusion of gametes gametes it is produced by one gamete is produced by female the other gamete is produced by the male which comes in contact with each other they fuse and then they produce a new individual the fusion of you can see the picture two gametes are coming closer they are fusing together to form the zygote this zygote develops into a new individual so the three main reproduction in algae that we see is fragmentation spore formation and fusion of gametes the next one is classification of algae so algae are classified generally into four categories based on the pigments present in them pigments is a colored substance which is found in the algae so based on this pigment um, we are classifying the algae into four categories so you can see a table so the first one is blue green algae the group of blue green algae are called as cyanophaceae so cyanophaceae is a blue green algae the type of pigment present in them is phycocyanin so the name itself suggests blue green algae hence the algae are blue green in color the pigment which is causing the color is phycocyanin the food material which is present in this algae is cyanophycian starch example of a blue green algae is oscillatoria the next one is a green algae this is a very common one a group of green algae are called as chlorophyceae the pigment which is present in the green algae is chlorophyll the food material present in these algae is starch example is chlamydomonas the next one is brown algae the group of brown algae is called as pheophyceae and the pigment which is present in them is fucoxanthin so fucoxanthin is present in them the food material present in them is laminarian starch and mannitol example is laminaria the last one is red algae a group of red algae are called as rhodophyceae and the pigment present in them is called as phycoerythrin so phycoerythrin is the pigment present in them and the food material found in them is floridian starch an example of a red algae is polysiphonia so these are the main four classification that is blue, blue green algae green algae brown algae and red algae so i have mentioned in this column reserve food material so you will learn about why food material is taken into consideration what is the importance of it you will learn it later so these are the starch different kinds of starch are found in the algae so that you should consider it for now so these are the four classifications of algae you can see here a picture so you can see with the color you can indicate that the water is contaminated or the water is having high amounts of blue green algae so next it is a picture showing green algae 
so you can see the third picture you have different kinds of brown algae so these are different kinds of brown algae which are found in the aquatic region and the last one you can see it is a red algae so the color itself indicates the different kinds of algae present <coughs> So we are into the last topic on algae that is economic importance. Economic importance means. So we have already come to know that we are somehow surrounded by these algae. So are they of any use or are they benefiting us in any way? Yes, these algae are benefiting us in many ways. So let us see what are their economic importance. Importance of algae in the economy. The first one is food. So you might wonder algae which is a seaweed. Algae is a Latin word seaweed. Can it be eaten? Yes. It is having large amount of nutrition in them. As I had shown you the previously a table. Different kinds of starch and different kinds of algae. These starch, along with starch, we have high amount of proteins, vitamins, iron and many other minerals are present in this algae. So it is highly nutritious food. So these um, algal food are consumed as a part of their uh, dietary in countries like Japan, England and India. Example of such a plant which is such an algae which is consumed is ulva and some algae are given as a food for the domestic animals example is laminaria so you can see this is ulva uh, a seaweed that is nothing but an algae which is used in different kinds of dishes because it is highly proteinaceous the second one is agriculture can these algae be of any benefits in agriculture? Yes, it is of benefits because we know that the blue-green algae are capable of fixing the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil and increase the soil fertility. So in the previous videos, we had learnt about nitrogen fixation. So it is done by the blue-green algae which is found in the soil which is capable enough to um, absorb the atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into nitrates and nitrites which is of benefits to the plant as well as increases the soil fertility. Example of such algae is anabina. The next one is agar agar. Agar agar is a commercial product which is sold in the market, which you get it in the market very easily. It is extracted from a red algae called gelidium, which is used to prepare growth mediums in lab. As well as it is used in preparing many jelly substances or candies or anything. So agar agar is a powder which when you add it into a... Um, um, hot water or a uh, warm water and continuously stir it it becomes a jelly like substance which is used in preparations of uh, candies or jelly substances and it is also used in the preparation of growth medium in the lab on which because why it is a growth medium because we know that algae have proteins in them and based on this proteins we can grow different microorganisms and study them. So that is why the agar agar is used to prepare growth medium in lab. So the next set of economic importance is iodine. So yes, iodine. Iodine is an important mineral that we don't get it from several food items that we consume, but it is found in Algae. Algae is a good source of iodine which is very much required for your body. So that you get it from 
a group of brown algae example laminaria so this is a laminaria from which you can get iodine the next one is space travel space travel so what do you think space travel could have any relationship with algae yes so some algae are useful in space why do we need algae in space so what happens is the people who are going to space that is astronauts they consume algae because it is a high source of protein minerals potassium iron etc so as a food supplement they take this algae and one more thing is as these algae are autotrophic they produce oxygen and they consume carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis so they keep the environment rich in oxygen and the carbon dioxide that is given out by us they consume it and use it again for photosynthesis so this that is why algae are useful in space travel so the algae that we can use for space travel is chlorella pyranoidisa so you can see the pellets and the powder forms which are consumed by the astronauts so the last one is single cell protein so single cell protein means the protein source which is prepared by a single cell algae the single cell algae which is a protein source is called as a single cell protein so we have different kinds of algae which are a good source of protein um, and other minerals and it can be a food supplement so chlorella spirulina it is all considered to be a nutritious food supplement and it is found in the markets so this is spirulina which can be consumed as pellets or tablets or as powder in any form so till now we have learned different we have seen the general characteristics of algae we have seen um, different mode of reproduction in algae then we saw different classification of algae based on pigments then we again saw few economic importance of algae so algae are a part of our life which we find everywhere in the nature in the moist places so this is a detailed study of algae thank you